Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over null pointers and how to declare multiple pointers in a single line. So in one of my earlier videos, we talked about how to declare multiple variables in a single line. So here you can see we have int a, b, and c separated by commas. And so each variable a, b, and c are of the type int. And we can do a chain assignment. So I can do a equal to b equal to c equal to 20. And we assign 20 to all three variables. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get 20 for each variable. And just as another quick recap, we can also initialize each individual variable. So I can say a equals 10 and b equals 15, c equals 20. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get 10, 15, 20. So that's just a quick recap on declaring multiple variables in a single line. And if you want to quickly review that topic, I have a video on that and I'll link it in the video description. All right, so just like with variables, we can declare multiple pointers on the same line as well. So let's say I want to declare three pointers. I might type int star a pointer, b pointer, and c pointer. And here it looks like we have three pointers and they are each pointing to an int. But actually what happens is a pointer is a pointer to an int, whereas b pointer and c pointer are ints. So why is this the case? Well, when we're declaring pointers, we can do it in three ways. We can do int pointer space and then the name. We can also do int space star pointer or we can put a space in between both. So I can do int space star space pointer. So all three of these are the same thing. They are pointers to an int. So the pointer is actually more associated with the name than it is to the type. So if I want to declare three pointers, instead of writing it like this, I would have to put a star in front of each name. So in that case, instead of writing int star space, I'm going to rewrite it like so. And then I can do star here and a star here. So now we have three pointers. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this as a note here. So now we have three pointers and we can assign each of them the same value. So I can do a pointer is equal to b pointer is equal to c pointer and we can have all of them point to a. So let's add some print statements. So I'm going to print out the memory address as well as the value at that memory address for each pointer. So let's see out a pointer, a pointer, and then the reference of a pointer. And I'm going to copy and paste this. And let's change this to B. And let's change the last one to C. Oh, and let's add some colons here as well. All right, cool. So now let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we get A is 10, B is 15, and C is 20. And then for all three pointers, we have the same memory address, which is the memory address of A. And when we dereference each pointer, we get the same value. And so each one has a value of 10 because they're pointing to the same memory address. And just like with variables, we can initialize each one on the same line. So instead of assigning them all to the memory address of A, let's assign them each to the appropriate memory address that corresponds to the letter. So we have A pointer pointing to the memory address of A, and then B pointer points to the memory address of B, and then C pointer points to the memory address of C. All right, so now let's save and run the program. And now you can see we get three different memory addresses and we have 10, 15, and 20, which corresponds to the values of A, B, and C. All right, so that's how you can declare multiple pointers on the same line. Now, another thing I want to address is sometimes when you declare pointers, you don't have a memory address ready to assign to them. So for instance, let's say I declare two more pointers here, int star, and let's say D pointer, and another one E pointer. Currently, I have two pointers to an integer, but they're not pointing to any memory addresses. So what happens if I were to print out each one? So let's do C out D pointer. And then E pointer as well. And let's also add N line so it's easier to read. 
All right, so D pointer and E pointer both point to nothing. So there's no memory addresses assigned to each one. So let's see what happens if I were to run the program now. And as you can see, D pointer gets zero, but E pointer gets some memory address. And we actually don't know what's stored at this memory address. It could just be a random memory address location that was assigned to E pointer. But either way, we don't want these pointers to just randomly point to memory addresses. So if we have E pointer, for example, pointing to that random memory address, we can actually try to dereference and see what the values is stored at that memory. So let's see what happens when we try to dereference the pointers that we don't know the memory addresses of. And let's do the same for E pointer. All right, now we are dereferencing D pointer and E pointer. Let's save and run the program and see what happens. And you can see we have D pointer zero and we try to dereference D pointer and we get nothing. And it doesn't even print out E pointer. So basically we had an error in our program. So you should never try to dereference a pointer if you do not have a memory address location that you are aware of, because this could lead to unsafe behaviors. We can modify the value of some memory address location without even realizing. So what happens here is we get something called a segmentation fault. And a segmentation fault basically occurs when you are trying to access memory that you do not have permission to access. And whenever you have a segmentation fault, otherwise known as a seg fault, usually what happens is your program crashes. So that's what happened for us just now. So we should not try to do this. And in this case, instead of having D pointer and E pointer point to some random memory location, in C++, what we should do is assign each one no pointer. So I would do D pointer is equal to E pointer is equal to no pointer. And basically what the null pointer does is it tells the compiler that D pointer and E pointer, these two are pointers, but they have no memory addresses associated with them. So what we do is we just assign each pointer a temporary value, which is basically a null value. And prior to C++ 11, which was released in 2011, we did not have null pointers. So instead we had either null or zero. And null is basically a keyword for zero. And the problem with assigning these pointers to zero is zero is of the integer type. So it can lead to unsafe behaviors because pointers should not behave like integers. So instead we have a null pointer, which is much safer than assigning it zero. Since if you hover over, you can see null pointer is its own type. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Basically, you can declare multiple pointers in the same line and assign each pointer a value on the same line. And if you declare multiple pointers, but you don't have memory addresses to point to, then you should have them point to a null pointer. All right, so that's it for this video. And if you found this video helpful, give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date on more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.